Welcome to Vidmark, a podcast to give you the video marketing knowledge to always hit the mark. Let us help build your confidence with video strategy and content creation best practices. Join us weekly for pro tips and guest interviews as we explore the powerful communication tool of video. It's time to boost your business. Let's talk video. I'm very excited to have a special guest today, uh, Jacob Christensen, who is uh, the fancy talk is that Jacob is an Emmy nominated and Tally Award winning visual storyteller. In recent years, he's served as the creative lead on projects for Microsoft, the University of Washington and Delta Dental of Washington, among others. But what really gets him out of bed every day is his drive to help others. He wants to make a positive impact on the world, and that intent is imprinted on all of his creative endeavors. Jacob, thanks for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Goodness gracious, you got that down. You've like got the radio voice and everything just going. <laughs> <laughs> well, you made it easy. It was an easy read there. Um, <laughs> whereas sometimes, yeah, people put in uh, like some tough words and as you know, from, you know, video, like script writing and reading, uh, the way we say things a little bit different than how we write them sometimes. So thanks Definitely. for making it easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try my best. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to have you on the show, Jacob. We, uh, I've known about you for, uh, like a couple of years through Steven, who always said really nice things about you. I've watched your videos on YouTube and on LinkedIn and, uh, yeah, you're just, you're smashing it out there. You're doing an awesome job. Uh, maybe you can tell people a little bit about yourself and um, how you got started in doing video production. What a can of worms. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, okay. A little bit about myself, Cliff Notes version. Uh, I've been running a production company for a little over a decade now. Uh, and that really spans the gambit. It's everything we've done commercials. We've done pieces that are shown, you know, like I actually got to watch one of my commercials before watching a Star Wars film in theaters. Um, would have been cooler to work on Star Wars, but you know. Um, but we also- Wait, wait, like just tell me about that really quick. So you like, <laughs> <laughs> that's actually, you can't just like throw it out there. So you, uh, was it one of those, I think I've seen those, like when I go to the movie theater, um, like- Yeah, no, I'm the guy that like no one likes. One. Like, <laughs> because it's like, oh, great. Now we have to watch ads uh, before the thing. But I, I was told that it was going to be running in theaters. I had no idea that it was going to be when I was watching Star Wars. So I was like, what just happened? Like, it was a very weird experience. Um, I, I, I don't know. Sometimes you just like make the thing and you never see where it actually goes. And it's just like, oh, I think it's running on Hulu as a pre-ad or YouTube, or they're not putting any money behind it or whatever. But uh that was one instance that was literally like dumbfounded it's just like I actually started recording and everything it's just it was kind of crazy um wow. yeah it, I I've done it all I've done the gala fundraising video I've done the one man band type content I've led the team of 10 plus to to bring something to fruition uh and really over the course of that journey, it was figuring out what the heck I wanted to do and become uh, and I'm still doing that we should always you're never there yet um but a big part of that for me this I've been saying this year but it's really the past two years is that I've been trying to put myself out there film myself like you alluded to earlier and actually you know like give insight to the industry uh to people that you know like I wish I had this information 10 years ago uh you know how to quote a client how much money you should be anticipating, you know, like all these things of like, how much do you actually make working in the video marketing film industry? Um, I'm, I'm trying to tear back that curtain and show people what's actually back there. Uh, and in that process, um, it's honestly been really beneficial for me to, you know, basically be super transparent and level with clients. Um, you know, they get a kick out of seeing the behind the scenes process as well, because, you know, if we're filming a 10 minute behind the scenes piece for how we film a commercial, it's not just helpful for an aspiring filmmaker. It's also helpful for a marketing director to say, oh, this is how this functions. This is how this team operates. And I, I can see going on the road with them and like not feeling like, uh, and this might be a little aggressive, but like, like they're going to kill me or something like, oh yeah, this is a chill dude that, you know, we can wake up, eat breakfast with and then go film the thing. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Maybe a little you aggressive. Are gonna be no yeah yeah but i'm with you because yeah you're gonna be with this person for you know 
half a day, a full day. Uh, you're going to be at like yeah, a, minimum, probably, yeah. probably an unknown location for both parties, you know, as the, the client and yourself, you're maybe if you rented out a space. So uh, yeah, it needs to be someone they can get along with. And I think, um, you know, right off the bat, like your personality shines through all of these videos. And I think that's a huge part of it. <laughs> and honestly, that is really uh, the goal and where all of this stemmed from was uh, I can only shake so many hands, I can only meet so many people. But if I film myself, I can actually show that to thousands of people simultaneously. Um, and the whole goal really is, you know, like clients can get a gut check. I like this guy or I don't like this guy. And it's okay if they don't like me because it means that we're saving each other hassle. I would like to think that most people like me, but well, you know, <laughs> uh, if they don't, it, you know, they can see like, I don't want to work with this person. It saves us hassle, saves us the whole like wasting hours of meeting each other and quoting a project and then potentially even working together and realizing like at the end of it, like, yeah, that shouldn't have happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, you hope that's not the case, but yeah, I'm with you. And um, yeah, there's always going to be people I think that don't, don't like whoever you are, even if you're the nicest person in the world, some people don't like nice people, which is like really odd. Um, <laughs> as a, as I can attest to uh the podcast reviews we have uh, nine good ones and one negative and you always think about the negative so <laughs> always always but uh no very cool i like yeah your behind the scenes videos are awesome i would recommend anyone who's listening or watching this podcast uh take a pause and check out your maybe you can help me with the title of it but it's the bmx uh bike with the uh, lights in the background you guys have the the fog machine going yeah yeah there's so the the title of that piece um well i don't know about the title but the company's propella p-r-o-p-e-l-l-a uh that was there's two behind the scenes videos of that actually one's a studio shoot and one is out actually riding it around town um super fun bike to work on and yeah we we have other behind the scenes videos of me leading content and there's like we're actually filming one later this week uh so there's that stuff is coming out all the time that's awesome. Yeah. Just doubling up your work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> doing, it's... Like doing the work and the behind the scenes, but it's, I always like behind the scenes content. It's more fun to edit and piece it together. Cause there's, but the stakes are lower and you're able to just create a vibe of fun, which I've noticed with a lot of yours. Like it's just, yeah. And honestly, that's been a component of the work that has really inspired me in a way that I wasn't really anticipating. Uh, because I can push the envelope on my own content. I can do the weird transition. I can do a quirky animation or, you know, like do the weird, like throw your hand up on the camera type stuff. Uh, and I've had some clients reach out and say like, not only do we like you, like we want that style, but we want, you know, our representative in front of the camera, um, mm -hmm. which, you know, before filming myself and releasing content of myself, no nonprofit reaches out and says we want that. Hardly any corporate people are going to reach out and say we want that uh, until they see it in your portfolio and they say, oh, can we just copy paste that and put our person in there and talk about a different topic, you know? Um, so it's it's been both liberating in the sense that I get to be a little more creative, but also really helpful because I, I just wouldn't, you don't get to make that stuff without having made it in the first place. It's kind of a weird chicken and egg situation. No, I'm with you. And um, especially in this field where like it's so much imagination and having to think about like outside the box and being creative that if you don't have that like proof of concept to try to sell or like persuade your cl client or customer about it without seeing it, they they're like, oh man, I have no idea what you're talking about. Like, let's just go with the thing that we know. But right. if you already have, you know, proof that's done well and it's exciting and it's, and it works, then they're a little bit, it's easier to get them on board. It's 100% accurate. Seeing is believing for almost every client. Uh, it's, it's especially because there's a reason they're typically hiring you because they don't really know what they're doing. Um, so, and that was a broad stroke. Please no one attack me for that statement. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, a lot of the time I come in and say, you know, we're going to do X, Y, and Z. And they just like, okay, wait, we needed to define some vocabulary here and, and get on the same page and even understand like, how long is this post-production take? And, you know, are we animating things? How long does that take? You know, it's, it's, there's a lot. <laughs> yeah. It takes a long time. That's what, uh, 
it sometimes baffles me too sometimes because i forget like oh like we're gonna have this initial conversation you know maybe schedule a time to shoot you know have a check-in do the filming have a few more correspondence and it, it does take a while like everything that's um you know really good that we know of is really good because it took time to get there you think of most you know, definitely a, a really good dish or a really good car that's how they yeah. got there is by you know I, a lot of hard and work. i feel like there's there's this disconnect and you, you i'm just gonna ramble forever so you tell me to shut up whenever no this um, is perfect <laughs> <laughs> uh i feel like there is this disconnect where you know like i've heard people quote based off of how long the end product is which is, is ridiculous. So people saying like, oh, like a minute equals $2,000. So if it's a five minute video, it's a $10,000 project. I'm the complete opposite. Uh, if it's shorter, it probably actually costs more because it takes more time and effort to consolidate ideas and get them down shorter. I mean, some of the most expensive advertising pieces in existence are 30 second Super Bowl commercials. So it's... <laughs> Uh, the type of thing where, you know, there's just so much education with clients that's needed because sometimes creatives aren't even all on the same page in terms of how much time and effort it's going to take to create something. And then you go and you tell that to someone that, you know, doesn't even know if it should be in 24 FPS or 30 FPS and like what all the things uh, boiling down to the point. That frames per second really... for the audience listening. Oh yeah. Frames per second. FPS. Um you really need to work with people that know what they're doing and that can be a partner and collaborator. Uh, because if not, you, it's just, it just sucks. You're just floating in an ocean alone. You don't really know what you're doing, you know? Exactly. Well, yeah, that's why you hire a professional. Cause they, they know the equipment, they have gone through all of those hardships. Whereas like, yeah, I mean, we can say best of luck to anyone that wants to go out and create their own video, but they're going to have to go through the same pains that we did in those early stages of, we were just talking before this, like getting your equipment to work. Did you wipe your cards before recording? Did you charge everything? Like those are the things that your videographer or your cinematographer, we, we talked about, maybe we could, this would be a good transition. We could talk uh, titles um, and how important those are, but hiring a professional that's able to do a good job for you. Yeah, totally. Um, do you want me to go into titles? Do you want me to just lay Yeah, let's that? go into titles. That was one of the big things uh, when we initially did our talk for the audience, just to give you backstory, is that like we were talking about it before, and I think I, I had called myself a videographer, and you're like, oh, no, a videographer is probably not the best title to use to describe what we do because it's so much more than just pressing record on a camera, right? Yeah, and I feel like uh, videographer is a fine title for a lot of people, um, but I think just if we're breaking it down, like in terms of marketing, like who's your target market, it's probably a director of marketing or maybe a manager of marketing, depending on the size of the company and everything. Um, them hearing the term videographer versus cinematographer or creative director or, uh, you know, founder of production company, uh, it, you know, you can kind of hear you know, videographer on a scale of one out of 10 might be like a six or a seven, like, yeah, they, they know what they're doing. But like, if you come in and you say like, I'm, and, and this is my thing is that I'm a technically oriented creative director, uh, meaning that I do love cameras and lighting and I do have those technical elements, but really at the end of the day, my brain is all wrapped around story and how do we actually get your story in front of people in a way that is relatable and fun to interact with. Um, creative director versus videographer really, you know, it very quickly says how much money you're going to anticipate paying this person, what kind of quality you're anticipating, how much respect they have for themselves potentially. Um, and I know that the term videographer has like really come into fruition over the last 10 years. Uh, and I called myself that when I was first starting out. Um, but at the end of the day, I've definitely found that like, nah, don't, just don't call yourself that like it's, it's going to put you in a in a bracket that you don't necessarily want and and i think that mindset the in the intentional component really bleeds through in everything in our industry of just like what do you wear to a shoot do you wear a button up that is like it doesn't have to be a super nice button up just a button up or are you wearing a tank top you know like how do you show up to a meeting and talk to an executive um because they are totally going to pay you uh, what, you know, what that, yeah, accordingly. Like. they're going to feel like, yeah, like accordingly, they're, 
it all matters. And like, we're, we're really talking about, you know, we work in an industry that sells people off of visuals, sound, feeling, emotions, like all these things I'm saying are just bringing that out of the video spectrum and putting it into our lives. So like we're storytellers. Don't just tell the story in the video, tell the story in your own life. Totally. That's well put. All right. Well, we pretty much got everything. That was solid. No, <laughs> no, very well That's put. Very well put. Um, yeah. <laughs> It's always the best thing to say at the end of a, a shoot is like, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Oh, feels so good. Peace of mind. And then the back of your mind, like, did we get everything? I think we did. Yeah. We're good, like, right? is the media corrupted? Is it fine? Like, let's check it and back it up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All of those things. No, I think that's uh, very well put because, uh, yeah, that title and, uh, yeah, how you're perceived. Perception is such a big thing. Um, Perception is the difference between charging like yeah a couple hundred dollars or a couple thousand dollars for something. So you want to back it up with you know knowledge, skill, and experience, but still totally. um, looking the part. Um, and then yeah, I think that's also a good note for everyone that's listening, like catering to that different audience or because uh, sometimes yeah, tank top is good if you're doing like a music video, like maybe you're going totally. to go you know film at a festival. Uh, but yeah, if you're, <laughs> if you're showing, if you're going into a big corporate office and you're not wearing the right attire, um, I don't know, some people get away with it, but I don't think they get, um, the, quite the results that they want. <laughs> yeah. It takes a very special person to be able to do it. And some people do so respect that is not me <laughs> and is what? probably yeah. not the majority of what people want to see, you know? And I think those guys have a reputation. Like once your reputation right. is big enough, you can show up with uh, sandals and board shorts on and people are like, this is the guy, I guess. <laughs> yeah, this, this is the person that made the thing. And like, okay, I guess, I guess uh, <laughs> we're going with yeah. this creative direction. <laughs> exactly. Well, um, how are things looking uh, in 2021 for you? Like, uh, are you, you know, we're coming maybe you can talk about a little bit of pandemic. How has that affected business? Um, are things going well for you this month? I've been really trying to uh, get this scheduled, but you, you're such a busy guy that it, it's been, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm very thankful for you taking the time to help out. But yeah, how are things looking right now? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm busy, but I'm really the type of person that um, we'll call it a workaholic where like, there's no such thing as not being busy because if there is spare time, I'm filling it with something, um, which is both a superpower and a incredible weakness because sometimes, you know, you just hit the end of the day and you're like, whoa, I need to unplug. Uh, <laughs> but it, it sometimes isn't an option because you stack too much up. Um, in general, I like from a company perspective, we're doing incredibly well right now. Uh, we, okay, backing up. Earlier in this, I kind of talked about how I talk into a camera. I, you know, show behind the scenes for clients. Um, I also, you know, blog and I'm very active on Instagram. Um, I guess it's worth saying that it's at JKC Video, uh, which is the name of my company, my production company. Uh, I started filming and really going hard on all that content about two years ago. Uh, and as a result, all of that now is coming back to me because now you're, we're in the middle of COVID, you know, we're in the Pacific Northwest. How do you meet someone? How do you network? How does anyone get hired for anything now? You can't go to some event that has 40 plus people, shake a ton of hands, exchange business cards. You have to find them on the internet. So now people are finding me on the internet or have been bouncing around in their feeds for the last year. And I'm finally, you know, they're like, oh, like we're finally ready to commit to a project. And this guy's been floating around for a while. So, you know, we're going to check that out. Um, and so I, I feel incredibly fortunate that uh, I started it at the right time and that all of that is really coming to fruition. Um, and I, I, <laughs> there's a yucky part of all of this that like, I told, I feel that a ton of people are out of work right now and being completely screwed over. Like if, if you are, you know, like a cam op, it just, the work hardly exists right now because of COVID. Um, partially because companies aren't spending a ton of money on production because they're trying to, you know, keep a tight budget, but also just because it's a lot more complicated um, than it used to be. And now, you know, I've filmed uh, in, in quotes, uh, Zoom calls like this one. Um, I've filmed Zoom calls and turned it into 30 second commercials that aired on TV. 
uh and it's like it it the quality thing the whole like we need to film in person everything is being thrown out the window uh for getting the message across and a lot of companies are pivoting um and i've i've been very lucky to have been able to ride that pivot uh because at the onset of covid i i think i lost like fifteen thousand dollars worth of productions or something like in the first like two weeks of the shutdown and like like I was finally ramping up and like getting my feet under me in a new city and uh it all just got pulled right out from under me um and as a result I was like well now I have like three weeks what am I going to do uh and I made a pro bono piece for a nonprofit. I filmed the behind the scenes thing of like how I did that and how I made it using a zoom call and just phone footage that they sent me um, I turned that into a blog, shared that with people. And, you know, one agency that I've done a little bit of work with before. So there was already a connection. Um, they saw it, someone reached out to me that, you know, I already a producer that I already worked with. And they said, like, I literally just sent this to the entire staff. And after that, you know, like I had multiple, their producers knocking on my door figuratively saying, Hey, we saw that you can do this thing. Like, can you come do that for us now? Um, and I've, I've recorded so many Zoom calls for them. Like, I kid you not, probably past 100 at this point. Um, Whoa. And, and, you know, all those are turned into edited projects and, you know, are either airing somewhere or being pushed out on YouTube or just, you know, it's a huge talk on vaccine, a huge webinar with multiple talking heads. And we're just releasing that to the public. Um, but I have been super fortunate. Uh, I've also, you know, I heard this phrase just a couple of days ago and I love it. I absolutely love it. You know, it, it's this question of like, are you getting your work because you're working hard or are you getting your work because you're lucky? Um, and this, this person said, you know, it's not very often that a fish jumps in your boat representing luck uh but you have to be out fishing in the first place for it to jump into your boat and that like really and I know that's like a weird analogy for some people I love fishing so that totally works for me uh <laughs> but like if you aren't out there putting in the time then you're not going to get any opportunities and uh I feel like fish are jumping in my boat without me actually having to catch them but I'm also out on the water 24 7. Yeah Wow. That's very well put. And I mean, it sounds like you had been putting in the effort for many years and it, I forget. Yeah. I, I heard a quote like recently, like, because the nature of our profession, it's not the steady paycheck where you're getting every single no. week, like when you're working, you know, a nine to five job, but if you are putting in the hours, you're going to get rewarded and then hopefully you figure out what's working and then you keep continue doing that. Um, well, that's pretty exciting that you're able to kind of pinpoint from that two years of really heavily investing in Instagram, it sounds like, um, is paying off, which uh, I think that's inspiring for a lot of people that might be listening that sometimes it takes just like working at it, working at it, working at it without seeing some of those results. And then all of a sudden there's like that tipping point and things start to go your way. Totally. And, it, and I think it's really important because I know that, you know, someone's going to look me up on Instagram and be like, this dude doesn't have many followers. Like, how's he, how's he getting work? Um, it's not about getting like a million views on a piece of content for me. It's getting the right 10 views. It's about getting the marketing director or manager or CEO or whatever to see a piece of content and say, oh yeah, let's hire that guy. Like at the end of the day, it only helps me so much if a million people watch a piece, but all they do is like, and they, they don't actually, you know, do anything with it because I, don't make my money through <laughs> selling things on YouTube or anything or having any sponsors. Like it, it's all about uh, how do I get connected to the, the next person and um, build that relationship. And actually, you know, it, it's about finding the right people. And, and that is, there's a lot to be said about how <laughs> quality over quantity really makes a difference. <laughs> Totally, totally. And I think, um, you know, anyone that's watched your videos, I'm blown away, very impressed. It's all very, um, like cinematic, uh, great lighting and, uh, good storytelling. Um, so I'm, I'm very impressed. You do an awesome job. So, uh, Thank and you. it sounds like, 
yeah you've been like kind of putting together this portfolio still producing new pieces that are all portfolio like with the propella bike um how long have you been working on piecing everything together in terms of like being like a public figure and putting myself out there or yeah i think so yeah um i've been like really pushing for basically two years now i think a little over two years um and it, I mean, I'm not going to lie, like, it's a lot of time and effort. And and thank you for the compliment of, you know, the quality and everything looking nice. My whole thing was, I'm not going to like film something on my phone and then release it. And like, that's it. Like, I need to take every single step that I would for my clients, if I want to get clients, and if I want to get clients that are going to pay me the amount that I actually want to be paid. Um, so it is a long burn. Some of those videos I look at, I'm just like, oh, how did I spend that many hours working on that thing? But then, you know, three, four, five months later, someone comes around and says, that was amazing. Come do that for us. Uh, yep. You know, that hope being that over time, the library grows and people just keep seeing it and they, you know, they, they get on the JKC bandwagon. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. Well, I think that's pretty exciting. Um, yeah, you showcase all those uh, steps along the way. And then, yeah, I think the Zoom calls uh, captures, I think, a lot of the listeners that probably resonates with them because doing things remotely uh, not only like saves time uh, time and money on the, the budget side of things, but yeah, you're able to just do it you know, from the comfort of your own home and right. uh, you know, just help the client you know, get acclimated to make sure everything looks and sounds good. Right. Totally. And I mean, it's the industry that we live in, um, whether or not people want to kind of admit it, you know, like a lot of the cameras that are available today were not available 15 years ago to the average consumer, you know, um, not just talking about like 4k, 6k, 8k, whatever, uh, in, term, in terms of like pixel depth. Uh, but we just, hardly could own a camcorder 15 or 20 years ago and and it just wasn't accessible difficult to get to digital and everything and we're at the point now where you can make legitimate content from your phone or from a zoom call or you know like <laughs> the fact that my yeah. phone can film 4k is mind-blowing um and obviously you know it's it's all a grain of sand in in terms of uh you know, I don't even own like the newest, fanciest cameras because I don't have to, because all the tech now is like, it's like 5% better than the last thing. You know, I own a camera that was made in like 2016 or 2017. Um, and clients yeah. don't question it because they see the end result. They say it's beautiful and the story is good, but, or hopefully that's what they say. <laughs> uh, exactly. And, yeah. It's, it's way more about how can you tell your story instead of like what's the next piece of gear that i need that will like validate me in the client side because they don't even know about gear you know and it's cool if you show up with a slider but like at the end of the day is that really getting you a gig like i don't know <laughs> yeah people, i know uh, some people. one of the early things for like um people that work in film is like posting all your gear hoping that that'll be the thing that gets people like hey i have a, a red yeah, camera or i have the sony a7 <laughs> yeah uh, but they, yeah at the end of the day they don't care about that they care about storytelling and it, your personality are you fun to work with um so i think that's very well put um and then especially with some of that gear uh just for that five percent increase you're paying sometimes you can pay 500 or you know 1500 dollars for just that little bump and you're like is that you know kind of do a cost benefit analysis to see if it's actually worth it you know totally it, i guess it's worth pointing out that like the gear thing is a legitimate uh concern for some people um if you are a camera op or selling yourself as a director of photography cinematographer um yeah it, it's very helpful to say i own a red and I, i'm you know acclimated to the ecosystem and i you know will show up and know exactly what to do uh but that's you know you're you're talking about crews that have 10 plus people on them and that is a very different uh part of the business that i'm in uh because i'm working directly with a client directly with a marketing team directly with you know the people that want to tell a compelling story and don't even know that those things exist <laughs> uh, and they don't even want to say, know they, they're like right right they don't want to deal know. with that <laughs> they just want to know it's going to look good 
and sound good and be a compelling story. And that, and that's, yeah, that, that's the silver lining is it doesn't matter for some people, but at the end of the day, like it's marginal how much uh, buying the latest camera is going to get you over it, buying the right tool for the job. Definitely. Well, uh, I feel bad that we didn't mention JKC video at the beginning, um, oh, but maybe <laughs> you, maybe as like a little spoiler, you can say what they, I, I'm guessing it's your name, Jacob Christensen, but maybe you can let people know the K. It is, it is if it's it's a... my middle initial. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> so it's, man, I, I hate it when people use their initials <laughs> for companies, <laughs> which I get is uh, ironic and sad, um, but at the end of the day, I was also realizing that the reason people hire me is because it's me. It, it's not because um, there's there's an overarching name and I fit under an umbrella and you know I, I represent this huge thing. It's no, they're they're hiring me because they want it to be personal, they want it to be professional, they want the high quality that's coming with that. Um, and it does. I'm still like trying to get used to it. it feels a little weird. I've I've since. Uh, I hired an employee two months ago. And so it's weird for me to tell them that they work for the JKC video. Uh, but um, <laughs> I don't know. It's something I think I just need to kind of get over. There's, there's just a ton of agencies out there um, that are names. Uh, and yeah, at the end of the day, it's the, the brand is me. <laughs> I, th I think it's fine. You think of like all those like famous brand or famous bands out there of like, you know, Keith Urban or like Johnny Cash, like it's their name, but then there's guys in sure. the back that are playing, you know, the xylophone and bass and drums and everything. So <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. But I think, I think it's fine. It's easy, easy to remember rolls off the tongue. What's, um, what's it been like having like a new employee? I think that might be something that resonates with some of the people that are listening, um, has it been helpful? Has it opened up your schedule quite a bit? Yeah, it's it's really shifted my schedule, honestly. Um, so I hired Mo, um, who is a fantastic editor and cinematographer in her own right. Uh, she, she's a great storyteller. She understands pacing and everything, it's, it's, which is a really valuable concept um, that is very difficult to train in, to people. Um, it's been great because Mo gets really excited about how do we edit this thing, which for those that don't know, post-production in, in, you know, if you're taking pre-production, production, and post-production, post-production is often the thing that takes the most time. Um, depends on project to project, but generally you're probably spending 40 to 60% of your time in post. Uh, and that has freed me up to do stuff like this, uh, but to also film myself more, to also go out and actually create content to actually go and, you know, knock on those doors and shake hands with people, obviously figuratively. Um, but it's, it's time that I wouldn't have otherwise. So if yeah. you're thinking from, uh, <laughs> a mad men perspective or in a creative agency perspective, you know, like I have more time to be, uh, an accounts person and to be a producer, to be a director, as opposed to being the person that's doing all the clicking and, you know, we're just checking in and saying, I love this direction, keep running with that. Maybe we tweak this or that. Um, and honestly, Mo in general has been phenomenal. Uh, <laughs> she's a go-getter in her, on her own. And um, I met her through my graduate program. We, we went at different times, but she's just wrapping it up now. So she just, she's been posting kind of her journey online and she posted a thing saying, Hey, I'm leaving, you know, this multimedia internship that I'm doing right now. And I want, you know, something that's full time. And I've, I'd seen her work and I was just like, I haven't posted anything publicly, but I need someone. And I just saw the work coming down the pipeline. This is the first time I've ever actually had an employee other than myself. Uh, and it was like a terrifying leap of faith, but like right now, you know, she's doing 40 hours a week and, crushing edits and I'm just like actually able to set her up for success and instead of you know editing late into the night and then figuring out oh my goodness all these other clients like you know we have to have meetings to do pre-production because there's a shoot next week and um it's it's been a good shift uh I'm very curious so so we're about two months in um how I'm gonna feel in like six months or a year am, am I gonna miss some of that editing do I want to get nitty gritty? Um, but in general, it, it's been a really good shift for me. And for 
I mean, you know, putting everything into perspective. Oh, so cool. He hired someone like I should do that. I've been running a video production company for 11 years. And this is the first time I've straight up hired someone. They contract out all the time. I still contract out. Um, and for those that are like trying to get a grasp of what that is, you know, you can contract out for crew members if you need a bigger crew when you're filming, whether that's, you know, you're needing uh, a cinematographer, a producer, a director, PAs, camera operators, gaffers, which is lighting. Um, that is very standard, but it's also very standard to say, hey, editor friend, you know, we're going to be starting this project here are deliverable timelines. Here's the budget that we can pay you. You know, does this make sense for you to come on and do this? Um, I've done that tons, but I've never actually committed to hiring someone, which was a huge step for me. Um, so it's, it's not necessarily a huge flag if someone like doesn't have an employee, like that's totally normal in this industry because they have contractors um, and yeah. we, we grow and we shrink with the needs, um, you know, huge fortune 500 company comes to you and says we want an 18 video series you grow and you figure it out and you know you, you bring people on for six months or whatever and then contract ends and you hopefully get that renewed or whatever but um yeah the, the industry is so interesting because it can look so different uh and i mean the size of projects that mo and i are taking on right now is just a two-person team uh are quite large because we're bringing on contractors to fill in all those gaps i feel like wow. that was a really long-winded answer and i don't even know if i answered your question <laughs> no i think you did i was like oh yeah i got a new employee and no that was very well put uh you may make you're making my job really easy um <laughs> yeah i think that's really helpful yeah and you made me one that's awesome that things are going well. And I think that's helpful for people to know like where you guys found each other and how like you find someone that's like on the same page as you, you know, that you have the same you know, like kind of outlook on things. That's huge. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, when you have the opportunity to uh, maybe edit a project, maybe one that sounds good, maybe we'll be able to jump back in right. and, and do those things that you like to do. But I, I understand what you mean. Like when you say, like we were just talking about earlier, when you say like, that's a wrap on set, for me, I'm thinking, okay, now the real work has begun. Now we got to mm -hmm. figure out like, where there's no, like all the problem solving needs to be done in the editing booth. Like the famous, like, Hey, we'll fix that in post. Like that's when you're actually doing it. <laughs> so um, dangerous. And I remember like, uh, I, I, there's been times for me, even like I dread sometimes filming something because I know that there's going to be a lot of editing that goes into it. So you're just like, okay, well maybe I won't film this because I, I, don't have time to work on all that editing later. Like the filming sometimes can be like the easy part because you can just totally, you know, get get things set up, dial it in, film it. But then, uh, yeah, there's just so many iterations of just sitting with the work, replaying it over and over again, trying to get everything like the sequencing. So yeah, yeah that's nice I, that you've been able to free up your time. I've I've got a client right now um, that we're filming six videos in a single day, which is possible because it's very simple person talking in the camera, one setup. Um, so that's actually doable. Uh, and, but that's six deliverables at the end. And each of those deliverables may take an entire day to edit or more, depending on, you know, how fancy are we getting with the design? How fancy are we getting with animation? Um, or is it just super streamlined? And yeah, it's, I mean, roll a dice, throw a dart at a board. You know? <laughs> A cactus knows how to survive. It can endure scorching heat, limited rainfall, and defends itself against critters daily. Your business is no different. To survive harsh conditions, it's important to develop deep roots using media content that'll continuously nourish and support your marketing efforts day after day. Cactus Media is here to help you determine a strategy and create media content. Together, let's map out the next sequence of videos, podcasts, and social media to help your business thrive. Work with Tactus Media, media tactics that stick. Ouch. Visit tactusmedia.com to learn more. I think, that's, yeah, it's, it's kind of like exciting, but overwhelming that there's so many different possibilities. Um, sometimes having those limitations of like, you know, time or the medium that you're using to post it, like goes... Totally. I don't know. It's, it's a well, love-hate relationship, I think, for creatives. <laughs> and that's really, 
you know, from, from the marketing perspective, from the, the creative director hat that I wear, um, you know, we, we have to be asking, how is this being used before we even talk about when are we filming or what are we filming? Because we need to know that it's going to be a 30 second piece on Instagram versus a 30 second piece that runs in front of a Hulu ad or whatever, or if it's like an hour long webinar, you know, and then from that, we need to know how much you're willing to spend. Um, not so that we can bleed you dry and take all your money, but because, it, and I, I can't remember if I told you this analogy in the first thing, but obviously the listeners didn't hear it, but you know, I use the analogy of building a house. If you came to me and said, Hey, I want you to build a house for me. First off, I'm not qualified. You shouldn't hire me. But if you did, <laughs> then I would, you know, I want to know how much money you're willing to spend because there's no point in me creating a, you know, 10 bedroom mansion with a five car garage and a pool if your budget was a tenth of that. So there's no point in me saying we're going to rent a helicopter for this Instagram shot if you can't even afford a drone. So like we getting on the same page and like just understanding all the goals up front, um, which I know that you do all the time uh, and, you know, production companies in general will do if they're good and they're not just like hired guns uh, to show up and film. Um, but yeah, it's, you need to know that stuff up front so that when you get to post-production, you're not like chasing 10 different butterflies. There's like a very, you know, clear path for, for what you're actually doing with deliverables. Exactly. Yeah. Streamlining all of that. Um, no, I think that that's awesome. One of the things I wanted to ask you, like, since we've been kind of talking about it, is, is your favorite aspect, the, the editing part? Like, do you, what's, what's your favorite part? And maybe that's just shifted over the years. Maybe you have a favorite in the last couple of months, but. Um... That's a great question, man. Um, I've, I've honestly, I've always struggled with this question uh, because really in the film industry, a lot of people are very narrowly focused and for a good reason, because if you're working on, you know, feature length films or Netflix series or whatever, you want to be known as a particular thing because you're going to like join a union and be hi hired for specific, very specific jobs that have specific day rates attached to them. Um, but I'm just like the complete opposite. I'm just like, oh, I really like lighting. I'm going to dive hardcore into that for like a month and then be like, oh, audio is really fun too. Uh, and just, you know, the dog that can't determine which car to chase, um, which is sometimes a detriment, but also it can be a superpower. Uh, and for me, I've found over the years that like I am, I'm the type of person that really loves learning. And that is honestly why I do what I do because I, you know, I'm working with uh, a real estate client right now where I'm genuinely learning a lot of content from, <laughs> from the pieces we're making for them. Uh, but then I'm also, you know, working for a nonprofit that gets cancer medication to people that otherwise couldn't afford it right now. And like, seriously, every conversation that I have with every client is just, oh, I had no idea that that was even a thing or existed <laughs> or how you do that. And um, I love learning about clients in the same way that I love learning all about production. And it's become, uh, I don't know how to say it, like the Venn diagram of like being a technically oriented person and being, you know, like a creative storyteller is, is merging a lot for me, uh, mm. which is good because if I have an idea and I say, hey, I wanna film this this way, I can actually tell a cinematographer what I want and roughly what lens I want. and kind of the loose lighting and just like give them a direction and go versus I have worked with directors before where it's just a complete you know let's herd kittens let's like figure it out on the day and like realize that we don't have the right lens or the right setup or the right thing um mostly because they just don't know how to convey their opinion because they lack the technical element um that was a very big can of worms. Um, my favorite, <laughs> my favorite role in storytelling is honestly probably uh, the component of like, how do you find the golden nugget of what makes someone or a product or an organization special, and how do you shine it and make it look great for everyone else to see in the rest of the world? Um, so I think the storytelling component, but there is something that makes me really happy when you're just like, you sit down, there's an edit, there's a clear end goal. And you're like, yes, I need to do 
music and fine tune audio and color grade and add titles and after all of these things, like it's done. You hit export and you ship it uh, versus, you know, like you, you can do a check mark at the end of the day versus sometimes yeah. with story, it just, it, it doesn't end, uh, which, which can be exhausting <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. You mean like, just you like keep refining it, the project until it's like, quote unquote, yeah, perfect. I mean, it keeps getting refined to a certain point where you actually have to go and film it, but also, you know, then the client's already thinking about the next thing that you're going to work on. And, you know, sometimes it, uh, it benefits you to come up with an idea and pitch it. So it's, it's, it never ends. It's the type of thing where I'm walking my dog, I'm taking a shower, I'm driving, you know, to a production and, it's just always going in the back of your mind versus, you know, if you do uh, a shoot day or you edit something like it's just, it's done when it's done. <laughs> yeah. There's something beautiful <laughs> about that. That's interesting. I never really thought about that before. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, you did a good job of really explaining kind of all the different aspects. Um, you know, I think, I think of the term polymath, which is like, you know, the love of doing, <laughs> learning a bunch of different things. So you can definitely be that within the video world because yeah, audio, you can, there's people that are only specifically focused on audio. That's why we have 100%. like music engineers. Um, you talked about just a director or someone that works on lighting or just a colorist and the editing, like even the editing can get broken up into so many different jobs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But I'm with you, like trying to find that golden nugget of what makes a company special. And sometimes for me, that's like, you know, doing a sit down interview. And some, sometimes you don't even really get into the good stuff until 30, 40 minutes into the interview. And so it's, yeah, it's very fascinating, very exciting position to be able to, I don't know, put that spotlight onto the businesses and help them, you know, maybe explain who they are in a way that they didn't even think about before, you know, working with you. Right. And yeah, I, I get a lot of joy out of, I mean, I, I sometimes feel like I'm just the bridge um, between the technical people and the people that want to tell their story, but may not necessarily know how, uh, because it's, it's genuinely like you have to speak two different languages uh, to, to get everyone to, to get together and actually create something that's, that's genuinely helpful for people. And that's sometimes very difficult. <laughs> Definitely. Well, especially since there's like so many different types of clients out there and then the people you work with, there's so many different personalities. And so just get everything to come together uh, really effectively. Um, sometimes it's just a miracle, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it feels like it. <laughs> well, uh, I don't want to put you too much on the spot going into this, but is there a favorite you know, client success story? Uh, we've talked about a couple, but is there one that would be kind of fun to dive into? Uh, maybe someone that was really in a challenging sh shape and then they met you met and worked with uh, JKC video and um, you guys were kind of help, helped them get to like the next, you helped them level up, I guess, for lack of a better term. Sure. Um, it's a really good question. <laughs> uh, and if you're having a hard time, I have some of them pulled up here. We could, that I could just oh, rattle off. And if there's, well, I mean, I've got one in mind, but I just, I don't even know like if it's helpful for people to listen to, or if it's just like making me feel good. <laughs> let's, just, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Uh, <laughs> there, there's a current client that I'm working with, um, their realtor team in Seattle and uh, their video just went live recently, but it, it was a huge success story for me because I created something for them that they literally, and they have multiple cooks in the kitchen. They've got, um, between five and eight people at any given meeting weighing in on things. When we delivered our, you know, first client draft, there were zero changes. It just got launched within 48 hours, um, which as you know, not normal at all uh, because they want to change how a style is coming across, change, you know, how this font is being used, change. I don't look good in this shot. I don't like this music, whatever. Um, but this project, me and my team, uh, which is, you know, me, Mo, but this is, we did bring on contractors. We did bring on animators and uh, graphic designers and a, a helpful producer. Um, and 
this was the full nine yards. This was, this was actually one of the first times I've ever had, you know, usually when you're quoting out a client, I give them three options, you know, the super simple streamlined option, which usually isn't really the best choice, but we can technically do it if they want to fit within that budget. The middle option, which is usually, you know, the porridge is just the right temperature. Um, and then, you know, like the, the diamond package, which people almost never go with, um, they actually went with that. So this entire time it's been, how do we raise the bar? How do we do it perfectly for them? How do we create this perfect intro and film it in a super cinematic way? And, you know, how do we get all our ducks in a row? Um, super exhausting process, but the fact that they like came back and like all the, the main key clients just basically said, we love this. And like, even on the follow-up video call, I wish I recorded it. I didn't. Uh, but they were just saying like, this is exactly why we went with you. And this is exactly why we picked the upper tier package because we just wanted it first try and like to have it, um, you know, vibe with us. And that, that takes a lot more time and energy to study a group of people and a brand and to like really get on the same page uh, in terms of, you know, are they going to like that we animate their face and like put in a cute little, you know, bitmoji type thing uh, to represent them. And uh, I loved it and it turned out they loved it as well, but there, you know, there's <laughs> all these things that you just, you don't know what a client's going to react with until you show it to them. Um, so I guess success story for me, there being, I felt like I had a very uh, picky client. Um, it could have been a very picky client, but because we spent, you know, an extra 20% of time in post-production of like really ironing out, um, you know, going through multiple music choices internally, going through multiple designs and animation internally um, before we even hand it to them is just, it's great. And it makes them feel great. And it does, you know, it makes them don't even, they won't hesitate to pay me the next time, you know? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. You definitely got to get a testimonial from those guys. After yeah. That. I need it. Um, I need it. <laughs> <laughs> that's huge. Cause I found like a lot of the times that's good to know that you actually did bring them in for a little bit of the editing process along the way. Um, but yeah, I find sometimes you send off a, a project to a client that's, you know, you think it's done, but then when it's especially a, the bigger the organization, like the more people need to give their yep. feedback to, you know, so that way it reflects good on them so they can get a, you know, pay raise at the end of the year. Cause they, you know, gave their two cents on the video project. And then obviously you go back and do edited version V, you know, 12. <laughs> Gosh, final, 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 final at the end yep. of it, you know, yep. I, I gave up. I've actually, I've started just putting the date and the time of day at the end of things. Cause I had too many things that said final 2.0, final 2.1, final 2.2. Yeah. <laughs> that's too funny. Yeah, that's a that's a common. I think there's a handful of designer memes out there of yeah, final and then just yeah, I don't know, shoot me now or something. <laughs> yeah, it's especially being too with morbid. Multiple people. Yeah, it is a bit aggressive. Uh, but I made an aggressive <laughs> thing earlier, so here we are. Um, yeah, it's I mean really when you're hiring a production company or anyone that's doing a creative process for you, you're hiring a style and you're, you're hoping that they, you know, can deliver that style or, you know, that they can vibe with you. Um, and that's, you know, kind of, I was alluding to earlier, like Mo's been fantastic because we're on the same page. We under, we both understand what we want from pacing and uh, how animations should play on screen and everything, how colors should look, how audio should mix. There are all these really nuanced things that uh, oftentimes you send something to a client and a client says, I don't like it, but I don't know why. And that's because they can't identify the, the components of style that they're not syncing up with you on. Um, mm. And it, you know, it takes a lot of time and energy to, to like, I may, I always kind of joke with clients, but I'm like, tell me everything. Like, tell me how you're feeling today. Tell me if you ate a taco for breakfast and tell me, you know, like what kind of animation you want here. Cause the more I know, and the more I understand about where you're coming from, you don't actually have to tell me what you ate for breakfast. Um, it helps me get in your mind and like really understand, like they're not going to like this because it doesn't help this component of their target market. We want to help all components of their target market or whatever. Um, and yeah, I, I'm, I'm the sponge and it, you have to understand where they're coming from in order to 
really help them. And that's, it's difficult. There's a lot. Yeah. I'm with you. It's always yeah a lot easier to know and get in their mindset than like to aim in the dark and hope for the best. And yeah. um, so no, I think that that's awesome. Well, uh, you know, I think, I don't know what, maybe we did connect back when you were living here in Portland. Do you want to talk about like the Portland market? Like, cause I think some of the people tuning in actually do live in Portland. So maybe you want to talk about the yeah. Portland market or Seattle market versus now you're in uh, Woodby Island, right? Yeah. Yeah. Woodby Island up near Seattle. Um, so in general, what I found, uh, I, so I lived in Seattle for eight years or so, and then moved to Portland for about two years for my wife's residency. And then when that ended, she got a job up closer to Seattle and with the island. So got to go back to my, my home base, my market. Um, in general, the biggest differences that I saw were that Portland is very heavily oriented towards, towards uh, you know, feature length film production or uh, Netflix series, you know, like longer form content where there are 10 to 50 people on set to make a specific vision happen. Um, and that's what I was talking about earlier of like, you know, sometimes getting that camera package or the lens or the monitor or whatever, like helps you get the job. Those types of people that are working on those huge sets definitely are getting jobs because of access to gear that they have. Um, I am not that, and most of the Seattle market isn't that. Uh, Portland, Oregon, you know, no sales tax, has a ton of film incentives, um, doesn't have quite as much of a population or traffic issue as Seattle. Uh, so it, it's a really good mix for actually filming longer form content down there. It is getting uh, there though. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, there were a few moments where I was like, hmm. Yeah, it's like technically a smaller city, but yeah, this is still traffic, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but up in Seattle, as a result, you know, they don't have the tax incentives. Uh, Seattle is basically sandwiched between Portland, which has great opportunities, and Vancouver, uh, Canada, which has great film opportunities. So Seattle is just like, they're just not even trying to compete. Um, as a mm. result, there are a lot more production companies like myself, where, you know, they're anywhere between one, two, three, and up to like 10 people in the Seattle market uh, and they're doing very specialized work for Microsoft, for Starbucks, for Amazon, for you know Boeing, any of these Fortune 500 heavy hitters up here that need content um, and they just, we don't have the same style in general. This is a broad stroke, but I would be you know willing to guess that like 75 or 80% of work that would like normally have a 10 person crew um, in Portland. Like when Nike crews up in Portland, they have legitimately larger crews usually um, versus if there's a larger production in Microsoft. Yes, you might have five people, but that same production might have like 15 people down in Portland. And it's just because, um, you know, there's, there's the difference of a lot of people up in the Seattle area wear a lot of hats. So they don't need to specifically get X job because it's like, well, if we just a lot for an extra 30 minutes, then we can do that. Um, yeah. So it, it I feel like it's really difficult to even like understand. Um, and I don't know how well I actually laid that out, but like, Seattle no, you did a great really, job. You did a very good job. <laughs> Sweet. It, it's the, it's the smaller scrappier companies, production houses that are serving typically larger clients than in Portland. Um, and I, and I, you know, say that just based off of the amount of fortune 500 companies that exist in Seattle versus Portland um, versus like there are, larger production teams in Portland that are serving either feature length shows or whatever, or smaller brands. Um, and it honestly was a really weird experience for me to walk into, I don't remember what rental shop it was, but I was trying to figure out, you know, okay, if I need a complimentary camera to mine, you know, like what are the options here? And like the, I think the cheapest thing they had was a red. And I was like, oh, this isn't Seattle. <laughs> it's like a Seattle rental shop would have, you know, anywhere down from like something that like your mom might use to snap a photo of you on vacation to, you know, the upper tier packages. Uh, but it, it's, it's just because so many people are doing so many different types of work and Portland is so oriented um, towards the longer form content. Obviously not all of it, very broad strokes. There's still a ton of marketing agencies um, and video crews, but it's, it felt very- no, I think that's a good me. synopsis. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a really good synopsis, especially- 
I, I've kind of shifted away from the film uh, world or like the episodic series, but I think it everything's on the back burner of Grimm and Portlandia uh, oh, and all the number of stuff that, you know, is around here. So I think I wouldn't be surprised if another series comes out. If I'm a little out of touch, I'm sure they are filming some new things already in this area. Yeah. (laughs) That's very interesting. Um, Yeah. Thank you for that. What's uh, to do like, do do you go into Seattle to do some projects or do you do some work around like the would be area? Do you ever go up to Canada and do any filming? I guess pandemic is a little bit different. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like there's also legal reasons why that's not a thing. Um, (laughs) But I honestly don't know. I've never, I've never been invited to Canada. So maybe if someone listening here wants to invite me, we can go Um, (laughs) for work purposes, been for fun. Um, Because we're so close to the border. Uh, I haven't done any work on Whidbey yet, but I also just moved here pretty recently. Um, Most of my content, most of my clients are in Seattle. uh, And it, so for me, it's like an hour 45 or something commute each way, but like, you know, my sister lives there. I've got a ton of friends uh, and family there. Um, and I just keep reminding myself, like I used to live in, um, I'm gonna throw out a neighborhood that might mean nothing to people, but in Ravenna, in Seattle, and then I would commute to downtown on public transit. You know, that would include walking to the bus, taking the bus and then taking the link and then take walking to the office. It was usually like an hour in each direction. And I was in the same city, like I, like I was in Seattle, I lived in Seattle, and then I commuted to downtown Seattle, and it took nearly an hour. So now when it's like, oh, I have to drive like an hour 45, two hours to shoot, it's like, you used to do an hour daily each way, like, dude, you can do that like once a week or like once a month, you know, because <laughs> again, That's like so funny. much of my time is spent on pre-production, getting ready, and then actually going and filming for one day or two days or three days, and then coming back and leading all the post-production um so it's it's a long commute but also like i mean i live in paradise maybe i yeah. shouldn't say that. i don't want too many people to live here but like <laughs> start moving to would be yeah you're you're putting giving it too good of a, a spin <laughs> dude there's there's just beaches everywhere and like i literally yesterday i looked up in my office out my window and saw an eagle flying i was just like where am i like <laughs> what is this uh it yeah, I, I've been really enjoying the move so far. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. You do a good job of putting things like into perspective because yeah, I think that is a good comparison. Um, especially yeah, if you're commuting around a city and you have to pay attention the whole time, you know, heaven forbid that you like miss your uh, spot or miss your stop and then, you know, add an extra sure. 30 minutes yeah. to your commute there. So I'm just, I'm waiting for that, uh, that fully automated car where I can just take a nap and cruise into work. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. Edit the project while you're like heading out yeah, on your automated car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's my only fear with the automated cars is that like, it, it's similar to when they added uh wifi to the airplanes. It used to be like, you could kind of separate from work, but now that there's wifi, now people are like, no why did you respond to my email? I know you have right. access. So <laughs> I wonder if it'll be similar with the car. Maybe we'll have like cars driving around, around as like hotspots and uh, who knows. <laughs> probably already exists you know oh i'm sure it does we're just not cool enough to to have that stuff uh, <laughs> stay on the cusp yeah yeah <laughs> oh man well uh is there something that you're seeing out there today that you're just like oh man i wish companies would do something different uh or something that really you know makes you take a step back uh or maybe there is there just like one little thing that businesses could do to make an improvement or um yeah, something that pops to mind, um, which I don't know if it really benefits me to say this, because <laughs> uh, I'm kind of like getting myself out of the equation a little bit, but it's it's a lot easier to make content nowadays than it used to be. Um, and like, so like big picture, if you hired someone in-house and give them like a half decent camera and you know some audio and lighting equipment, you know, if they're getting paid anywhere from 50 to 100,000, whatever, uh, they can churn content it is just so much more accessible and so much easier. Now you just have to like set them up with a production calendar, content calendar. Um, but even outside of that, you know, from a nonprofit's perspective, from a personal brand's perspective, you know, I can film something on my phone or on a camera, on a webcam, on a thing and turn that into content. As long as I have a half decent idea of what I want to do. And I'm, I guess, meta experience 
Uh, I'm actually recording myself right now, not on my webcam, but like on a camera camera. Um, and uh, I guess I'm talking to a webcam and also talking to a camera right now. Uh, but the camera is filming me and it's going to like have some negative space back here. I'm going to be able to like have a little quote that just says like, I was on a podcast today and like, that's it. And like, that's a whole piece of content that gets people to know, oh, Jacob was on a podcast. He's, you know, an established video industry professional. Uh, and I'm going to tune in later and I'm going to check out the podcast, maybe check out YouTube, whatever. Um, it's a fairly light lift to set up something, grab a still or grab a video piece and like turn that into a piece of content. And so I'm going to, I'm going to bring that full circle. That's a very specific example for me, but you know, I work with a ton of nonprofits where, you know, we're filming a zoom call, we're recording a zoom call, which again, super easy. Um, it doesn't even have to be a zoom call. Someone can sit down, hit record on their phone and then talk into, you know, the camera, uh, send me or, you know, your production team, whatever content like B-roll is as we call it. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to give a specific example because this is going to ground us in reality. I helped uh, the circus project, which is a nonprofit in Portland. Um, you know, we wrote a script for them, recorded a zoom call, had them do their lines three times each took the best take of each one. And they teach, you know, the circus arts to people, which is super visual. Uh, and they had a ton of, you know, phone, cell phone footage of people doing circus acts and, and like, you know, doing, you know, feats of strength. And I'm, I'm totally going to botch everything. So they're probably wincing when they're listening to this. But um, as a result, we filmed someone on Zoom with a pre-recorded script. We took B-roll that they had, so I didn't have to go out and film it, which can be expensive. Uh, and then we housed that within a little bit of branding. And instead of being, you know, a five or $10,000 project or whatever, depending on how, you know, so many factors, as we've already talked about, um, it became a very accessible, like took three hours to edit and only took two hours to like create a script and actually record something. So it's like, oh, we're going to making something in like a, a day of time, day that's spread out across multiple days. Um, you know, instead of bringing an entire crew and, you know, going the full nine yards. Obviously, if you're trying to raise money, bringing in a crew and making things look fantastic and actually getting all the 100% right things that are going to emotionally, you know, like create uh, empathy with people, you know, it, there, you're going to see a difference, but like the bar is a lot lower. Like, and it's just, if you aren't in it, you know, the whole, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take kind of thing. Um, you have to be fishing. You have to be out fishing in order for a fish to jump in your boat. Um, it's, it's a lot easier to make content nowadays, uh, than it, than it used to be. And it's like one thing right now that I'm actually like building out this huge thing for nonprofits where I'm just showing them, here's how you take me or my team out of the production steps go create your own thing, go film your own thing, and then let a professional editor make it look as nice as we can and make it sound good and compelling and everything. And then, you know, pay a half the price or, or whatever, whatever that ends up being. Um, because, you know, it's, it's a lot more accessible. And I'm genuinely talking about like filming on your phone, filming on a webcam kind of thing. Obviously not really something that like a huge, huge, huge company is going to do a ton of. Um, but it's just like, if you feel like your company is too small of a fish in the pond. Like it's, it's so much more accessible than it used to be. And like genuinely, <laughs> like <laughs> there's some amazing companies and organizations that just don't get their voice heard because they give up before they even try um, simply because they just don't know what questions to ask in the first place. Yeah. I think that's really well put. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've been with you where there's where I've had clients send over photos or videos from their phone and you hodgepodge that with a, a Zoom interview and it creates a, a unique look. We, you know, we talked about limitations. That's like a way of like using a limitation to your advantage. Um, so, yeah, it's exciting that there's like, you know, there's just different ways of getting content and uh, yeah, the accessibility is, is right there. So. All right. It's just going to continue to, to be that way as everyone has, you know, these smartphones in their pockets, webcams on their cameras, um, and you can just get creative with how can you create that content. And then you were 
right too. Like if you're not producing any content, how would, how do you get your message out there? And I think some brands out there, they want to be so perfect with their messaging so that it, it holds them back. So like they'll create one piece of content, you know, every three months when really it could be doing something every, you know, week or every three weeks, which is a better cadence. Uh, and like, you're able to be more at top of mind of, of your customers. Um, yeah. Cause when you were talking about earlier, like, You've been doing this for two years, putting out all of this content and maybe the customer didn't need you like at that moment, but then when right. they did need you, you were the top of mind. Um, and they can only, you can only be top of mind if you're continuing that conversation, whether it's through social or email. hundred percent. And I won't like <laughs> beat this one too much because I have multiple videos and blogs that, that break down, you know, like how I networked over the course of the year and how you know, I actually saw people reaching out to me as a result of my blogging and vlogging content. Um, but I just had someone reach out to me who's been on the periphery of my circle. Um, they reached out on Instagram and they said, Hey, I've been following you for like a year, a year and a half now. Like we, you know, we went to the same school. I see that you're doing really cool stuff. Like is there a possibility that we could hop on a zoom call and just like talk video for a minute? Like I'm a manager of marketing for this company. And like, the first thing in my mind is like, of course you can, <laughs> like, this is exactly the whole goal. This is what I want. But from their <laughs> perspective, you know, it's just like, I've just been following you. And I feel like, can we, like, I, I hope that you're open to it. Um, and I, that, that seed took like a year and a half to, to, to germinate and to actually grow. And like literally later today in a couple hours, we're actually hopping on a call to like talk through their brief and um, all the goals that they want to accomplish with their content. Yeah. Uh, and it's, dude, it, you got to get momentum. It, it takes a lot of momentum. And you know, that analogy of like, you have to plant your seeds to let them grow. It, if you're just starting out, it is brutal. I'm not going to lie. It is totally brutal. Like you cannot quit your full-time job and then expect to be like, Hey, I'm now available for video projects, but I've never built up a client list before. And I'm not like pushing myself a ton. Um, you have to sell yourself and you have to tell people that you're available. Uh, and, and it's that silly analogy of like, if you're not out fishing, the fish can't jump in the boat. And yeah, I, I know so many people that, and, and I've, I've been guilty of it too, um, where you're just kind of sitting at home and you're like, well, I posted this cool thing on Instagram and it's like a photo I took. And it's like, yeah, that might be cool. But like, unless you're saying, you know, you don't have to be as forward as saying like, hire me to take this photo for you or whatever, but, you know, post a photo of you taking said photo or like post a photo of you, you know, like interacting with a client or saying, you know, like I'm working on this project with this organization. Like it's super fun. I'm looking forward to more partnerships in the future. You know, it's, we have to do the same thing for ourselves as creatives as we do for our clients. And we have to tell our story just like we tell theirs. Definitely. No, I think that's huge. Yeah. And just like putting in the work and, uh, yeah, putting yourself out there, making yourself available. And I'm curious, uh, that person I reached out to, maybe they were intimidated. Honestly, I think as your work is, your work looks very polished, very professional. And I think you're probably creating that intimidation factor where people are like, yeah, do you, do you even have time to talk to somebody that isn't like at this uh, high caliber? So that's, I think that's kudos to you for, for putting in the hard work and uh, creating right. a really good product. <laughs> now I'm going to have to like, create this marketing campaign to be like your friendly neighborhood yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pull off the spider-man mask i love yeah. it <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm in i'm in <laughs> oh man well I, I think um you know just a testament to your work i think the video that did it for me is i watched your coffee like how many coffees it took for you to convert you know x amount of clients and that was the one i was like man this would be awesome to have jacob on the podcast so i think you know that bringing it full circle your marketing is working uh, nice even while you're sleeping <laughs> even while you're not there yeah <laughs> well and for, i guess for people that you know haven't seen that didn't check it out um or have no freaking clue who i am until this podcast um i made a deep dive video of my first year living in a new city which was portland and I, I logged how many coffees I got, how much that coffee cost, how many lunch meetings I had, how many networking events I went to, how many videos I released, you know, like how much did I put myself out there? And then I like pretty transparently break down how much money I got that year and where those clients actually came from. And I don't want to like spoil it for anyone, but 
it was not a great yield. Uh, <laughs> it was not a great uh, return on how many coffees and lunches I spent in Portland. A lot of my work still came from the Seattle area um, as opposed to you know meeting someone and shaking their hand and then them hiring me in two weeks. It just, it doesn't happen. Exactly what we've just been talking about. You get to plant the seed and it has to grow. And you know that now that I've moved back to Seattle, I'm gonna have multiple people reach out and be like, hey, Portland work. Like we met yeah. two years ago, <laughs> like let's do this. And I'm gonna be like, cool, 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 cool. Okay, I mean, that's a commute, but I can do it. I've done it like the opposite way, so. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, that's always how it works. Yeah, the seed yeah, that you planted two years ago and then. Of course. That's how it was for me is, uh, you know, I had a list of clients that I had spoken with, you know, five years ago. And then when I recently went back into doing freelance again, I was able to circle back with them. And I guess the, the seed was still there and they still had a good experience. They wanted to do work nice. again. So I, 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 I yeah. lucked out, but yeah, it can be really, you know, a struggle at the early stages when you're just like kind of figuring it out. And I found the same thing where you have these coffee meetings and sometimes they just don't, they just kind of fizzle out. And that, that was one of the big things when I first started out was like having reoccurring coffee meetings with the same person yeah. who at the end of the day was just like, I don't know, wanted some free advice or they were just like kicking the tires just to like, maybe they're playing around with the idea, but they weren't actually serious. So right. trying to differentiate who are the, the serious people versus, but, but I don't know, maybe in a year from now, they have enough budget and they can, you know, go ahead with the video project. It, and honestly, it's such a slippery slope. I've, I've had people where I'm just like, and this is going to sound so like toxic of me, uh, but you know, you can kind of evaluate like, okay, I don't think I'm really going to get an opportunity from this, but like, you know, I'm still going to get coffee with them or whatever. And um, I've had people give me opportunities that like, I was like, I thought you would be the last person to give me something. And you just gave me like one of the big, biggest projects of this year. And it's just like, Rick, like, <laughs> like, don't, don't judge people. Um, you know, the book is, is not just on the outside of the cover. And I've also, you know, I've met with creative agencies where they're like, yeah, we're stoked. We're going to work with you. We're going to bring you on for everything. And then it's just like crickets and uh, nothing ever happens. So I, and you never know, you just never know. And you don't want to be the person that follows up every month and says like, Hey, are you still interested in collaborating? Because then it's annoying too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> then you, you're on the opposite side <laughs> of where you want to be. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I cannot, overstate how much like you have to be very aware of who you're already connected to and who you need to be connected to um and sometimes you know you don't know anyone sometimes you move to a new city uh and you have to figure <laughs> it out and start from scratch so, yeah right start from scratch and um i was very fortunate that when i did move seattle was you know commutable for work um because without that, I would, yeah, that would have been a very different year. Goodness. Yeah. How do you get your gear around the, the city and everything? Now I'm with you. It's like, that's the exciting part about our jobs is you don't know who's connected to who, and you could wake up on a Monday and get a phone call and you're like, okay, cool. Let's like, this is a, one of the best opportunities of the year. So, right. Right. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a weird game. We play the lottery like every day. Yeah. <laughs> exactly sometimes you strike big sometimes you know it's just a scratch ticket and you gotta work you know work hard yeah. for the next one i think it's a good time to like transition into um like what's a what's a good client for you um just for people that are listening like uh how can they you know who's a good client how can they get uh in touch with you what's a good way for them to do some outreach man these are questions that i should really have better answers for um... you've been knocking out of the park no this has been really easy for me thank you <laughs> Um, I mean, my ideal client, um, I alluded to this earlier. If you're still here, if you're still listening, you're, you, you, I feel like you've got a sense of roughly who I am. Like these are the dedicated have... fans listening. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. 1%. Um, we, you know, really enjoy creating projects for people that are fun and unique and, you know, take that nugget of what makes them special and share that with the world. But that is very generic and can be said across almost any type of project. You know, I'm, I'm doing a series for these realtors right now. Um, it's an 18 video series where it's just two people on a couch having a conversation about the market and, you know, where they're seeing the trends going, we're animating things, we're making it fun. 
that genuinely would be really boring to a lot of people, but has been super fascinating to me. Um, but I don't necessarily like want to do that for the rest of my life either. <laughs> so having, you know, the nonprofit come and say, Hey, we want to tell this, you know, compassionate story of how, you know, we, we changed someone's life. I'm like, great, I'm there. And then bike company comes and says, let's make a 30 second piece on, you know, like why our bike is fun. And I'm just like, boom, great, a commercial now. <laughs> so, uh, in general, I, I do really enjoy intentional content. I enjoy, you know, when people have uh, a rough outline and they want to bring on someone to bring that project to life. Um, but, you know, we're the type of company that if you come to us, you knock on our door and you're not complete scumbags, uh, we'll probably help you. You know, we'll, we'll at least point you in the right direction of, of what you should be doing, whether or not we're the right fit for it. Um, best way to reach out is probably just popping into the website and going through the contact form. Um, the website is jkcvideo.com. Uh, and then my email is jacob at jkcvideo.com. Super easy, super accessible. I actually respond to the Instagram things and the LinkedIn things and the Facebook things. Uh, so I, I mean, just like we're saying, we have to be super accessible and, <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know, be there for people uh, when they need it. But in general, if you reach out and you think we might be the right fit, but I can't quite tell, like, I'll give you an honest answer. I'm not going to, there's no point in us wasting time um, and, and beating around the bush uh, because it's not going to help you. It may not help me. Uh, and, in general, like, I think we need a lot more of that in our industry <laughs> uh, yeah. of just, you know, transparency of like, yeah, that budget isn't really going to work, but like, I do know some people that will still get you some solid work for that or, you know, whatever, whatever that fit is so like live streaming. I don't do live streaming. I don't touch it. I it was terrifying, Yeah, but I have a partner that I'm always like, great. You get the live streaming. <laughs> like, yeah. Whenever they come to me, I'll make the things that go in the live stream. And then you, you just do that. And I, I don't make any profit all that off that. I just hand it off to, to the right production partner. Yeah. Just have those, that referral connection. Yeah. And yeah. And likewise, if someone like shows you a, a Super Bowl commercial, you're like, uh, that was made, you know, multi-million dollar budget, right. huge crew. Like, let's be realistic, kind of bringing them down to earth. But I think that's awesome. I, is, is it fair to say that if, you know, a company comes to you, they have no idea what they want, but they just want a video or uh, someone that completely knows what they want, you guys can help them, you know, make sure they see their vision and maybe tweak it if they, if it needs it. Yeah. I mean, both, both fit. Um, and they're both fun, different journeys. Uh, one, them having no clue can be scarier. <laughs> Uh, and it really depends on their organization and their perspective and how involved they want to be. Um, because, you know, we do take projects from zero to a hundred. We do, you know, do the full nine yards, um, coming up with the ideas, coming up with three different pitches, and then, you know, going from there, um, obviously that costs more, uh, but we also are the implementers, you know, if nonprofit comes and says, Hey, we did the thing that you talked about in the podcast. We, we filmed ourselves and then we <laughs> gathered some B-roll and like, can you make the thing? Then it's like, cool, great. You, you gave like very clear end goals and direction. And yeah, this obviously isn't going to cost as much because, you know, it's streamlined. Um, I mean, I, again, like a broken record, I think one of the most fun aspects of our job is that it changes day to day. Uh, and the fact that I can be giving feedback on animation and then editing something and then meeting with a client and then going on a shoot later. Like it's all like, that's what sets me alive. Like I am not built for going in a cubicle and doing the same thing over and over and over again. So uh, <laughs> all yep. challenges welcome. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Variety's the spice of life for, uh, you know, another <laughs> to add a cliche in there, but yeah, it definitely <laughs> makes things interesting. Well, I want to say, uh, yeah, anyone who's listening, I'm going to put all of the notes uh, to the different links in the show notes. And I just want to acknowledge you, Jacob, thank you for coming onto this podcast. Uh, I love like kind of the mission statement of, you know, making an impact on the world, a positive impact and helping other people. And, uh, thanks for yeah bringing on so many different tips and uh, tricks for people that are tuning in. Um, yeah, just keep up the good work. Thank you a ton. This has been a fun podcast. 
Dude, thank you for having me. I feel like there were a couple moments in there I really droned on. Uh, people can just hit that skip button, but no, those are the best. Uh, <laughs> I love it when people drone on because it, it, I don't know, it usually lends itself to lead into other different streams of topics and consciousness, you know? <laughs> that is fair. That is fair. Um, I do feel like you do get the best information when it gets a little murky sometimes. Sometimes it can also be like the biggest place of your time. Um, <laughs> but no, genuinely like pleasure. Uh, I think, I mean, if this is not transparent yet, I just want everyone to freaking understand more about the industry and like just pull back that curtain. And there's so many mysteries that people don't understand still. Uh, and I love what you're doing because you're talking to so many different people across so many different, you know, avenues and just unifying. And Cause the more we understand about how the world around us works, the better we can place our stories, the better that we can exist in the space. You know, it's, it just, it makes so much sense to, uh, appreciate and learn about others. So thank you for, for doing your work because genuinely really cool De stuff. Definitely. Let's get the word out there. Video is where it's at, everyone. Go out there and start <laughs> making stuff today. All right. Thank, thank you, yeah. Jacob. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, until next time, make sure your videos are always hitting the mark. That's a wrap. Thanks for tuning in to Vidmark, a place for all your video marketing needs. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite platform and tune in every Thursday morning on either iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and more. For a behind the scenes look and some bonus tips, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Until next time, good luck with your video marketing efforts. And remember, always hit the mark.